So many of us have heard and have used the term or phrase that's like comparing apples to oranges. We hear it all the time. And in my career of science and technology, a lot of times with data and analytics, we compare things that shouldn't be compared. And that phrase, comparing apples to oranges, is really a signal to say, you really shouldn't be comparing those two things. It's either inappropriate or it's not a good comparison. The same is true for people. So apples to oranges, interesting analogy for me, being a food scientist kind of fits. And in food science, I don't know, many of you probably aren't familiar with food science, and if you are, you may be a little perplexed as to what it is that we do. Food scientists, on a whole, are, are out studying food and trying to make the food supply safer. But in addition to keeping bugs out and keeping bacteria and terrible viruses out of our food supply, we also have a very large part of what we do around innovation. And one of the things we're, we're doing a lot of work today on is free from, so gluten-free, GMO-free, preservative-free, color-free, artificial flavor-free. You know, you guys are not very easy to keep happy when we're trying to develop new foods. You take a lot of tools out of our toolbox from us, and it, it makes it a little bit difficult. We, uh, we work on sustainability as well. We look at crops and, and overfishing the seas and making sure that we're going to have enough for future generations. We're looking to feed the, the billions of people that we need to feed in the next coming years. We look at nutrition and how nutritious is your food. Can we make it more nutritious by processing it a certain way or bringing it in a certain way? So food science in general is, is a, a study of food. And some of the things that might pique your interest a little, the things that we do behind the scenes when your cocoa is suspended in your milk drink, and you have your nice chocolate milk, we've, we've fixed that for you. When you're getting your bread from the supermarket and it stays soft for a few days, we've helped that along. And when that ice cream that you get that says zero fat on it is really super creamy, that's, that's the food scientists of the world. We, we, we've been helping you out all along the way and you, you never even knew it. So food science is a very multidisciplinary career. It's a very undertapped career. There's a lot of opportunities there. And it's a, a major or a, a career that brings in physics, chemistry, microbiology, biochemistry, nutrition. You need all of those components to actually do the things that I told you we do. You need all of that knowledge and you need to be able to integrate all of that together. So it's a very, very, very powerful uh, area and career. I have a huge amount of passion around food science. You might be able to tell by now. And it's something that has been, as soon as I, as soon as I stumbled onto the career, I knew it was, it was really for me because I love food and I love making the world a little bit of a better place or at least making people happy while, while they're going through their day-to-day their -day life. So my passion was not always, I'll say, appreciated as much by my friends and family because uh, while they were very happy for me that I found something, they would find me uh, talking about food sometimes a little too much or in a, inappropriate situations. So it would go a little bit like this, sitting down for dinner, did you know that that brownie has 850 calories? Did you know that that pasteurized milk that you're drinking, even after it's pasteurized, still has a million bacteria per gram? Do you know how that's made? 
Do you know what's in there? So I, I quickly realized that, you know, this passion of mine is wonderful, except for that sometimes it, it goes a little too far and makes people a little bit uncomfortable. The only time it's been a good thing is at a wine and cheese party where somebody really wants to hear about the top notes of their red wine or the, the sharp, pungent flavors and where it comes from in their cheese. So I quickly learned I needed to find an outlet for this extreme passion around food science. And I wanted to pay it forward. I wanted to encourage this career. So I began mentoring students. And essentially, my mentoring was a partnership with STEM. If you're familiar with science, technology, engineering, and math, it's a program where they're trying to engage more students to be involved in science and science-type careers. So I worked with, with STEM and the IFT, which is the Institute of Food Technologists, which is our um, very food geek society that we work with, who I love to death. And we came up with a mentoring program to encourage students to come into food science. And so I got my outlet. So I began going to students and talking about food science, the colleges that they can go to where that's a major, the classes they need to take, the types of jobs they can get. And I would also give them an example. So one example is I would take a ball jar, just like your canning jars, fill it with cream and a marble. And I would pass it around throughout the class and I would have the children shake the, the jar. And this was at local high schools or universities. And over the time period of the class, we would end up with butter. And you might say, well, that's a little elementary. You know, we're making butter. We're shaking a ball jar. But what, what I brought to them was the ability to take that experience and ladder it up to science and what really is happening. So a lot of times you hear students say, well, I don't want to go into chemistry. I don't really know what that is. What kind of job am I going to have? I'm not sure about micro, because it's just bacteria, and I just guess I have to study viruses all day. If you take food science principles and show them in a clear way, you can ladder up the science. So I would say we started with an emulsion, emulsion of water and fat. We used a marble to break up the emulsion, bringing it to life for them. In the end, the fat molecules coalesce. These are all very scientific principles and form butter. So at the end, they would say, well, I get it. I understand food science. I understand what this career will bring me. So it's very powerful to be able to bring that forward to students. And I recently had a, an occasion at a local high school uh, where I, I gave one of these demonstrations. And at the end, there was a a girl, young girl, about 16, standing in the back of the room, kind of milling around, sort of shuffling her feet, uh, like looking like she wanted to ask me a question. And so knowing children at that age, I said, well, what did you think of the demo? Do you have any questions for me? And she sheepishly looked down and said, no, not really. I said, well, what did you think? Would you ever consider this as a career? I, I would love to help get you started in a career like this. And she looked at me and she said, I like it and it's interesting, but I'm pretty sure I'm not smart enough. And I said, what do you mean you're not smart enough? You're 16 years old, you have your whole life ahead of you. What? Well, I looked around the room and it looked like everyone around me is smarter than me. They know more than me. I, I'm just, I'm pretty sure that, that I, I'm not going to be able to do this. And so it was a little tough for me. I, I realized I wasn't going to fix the solution that day because she was, she was pretty headstrong that, that she couldn't do this. So I gave her my card. I said, I, I would like for you to come do a shadow program with me at my company. And... Uh, as I'm leaving the school that night and putting everything away and putting everything in my car, it really was weighing on me that here's a student that, again, opportunities abound for her. And she's standing there comparing herself to a bunch of classmates in the room that she knows very little about. 
So it made me dig further. I have this scientific brain, as I've told you. I can't let things go sometimes. And so I started thinking, I'm going to dig into this a little further. There has to be a reason. Science, science minds make you think that there's an answer for everything. So I thought, I'm going to go in and look in the literature. I'm not a psychologist. Don't claim to be. But I, I, can, I can sift through the literature. So what I found was that in 1954, Leo Festinger, uh, a psychologist uh, in the United States, found or, or proposed a theory that said, he called it social comparisons. And what he said is that what exists within human beings is a drive, much like thirst or hunger, so an innate kind of primal drive, to self-evaluate and compare yourself to others. He claims it's a bit of an evolutionary ranking. And he feels that, you know, that this is something we cannot control. Of course, scientists like to bicker with each other and discredit each other, and I'm sure you've seen this uh, many times. Many of his colleagues said, no, it, it's, it's not all innate. There's some, there's some degree of innate, but it's, it's really a learned behavior. We all compare ourselves through our lives. Our children see it. They grow up doing the same thing. So for teaching this, we probably should stop. And there's a couple of reasons why we should stop comparing in general. The first reason is they never end. The, the comparisons of, of you to someone else never end, whether it's am I rich enough, am I pretty enough, do I make enough money, is my house big enough, do I have enough friends, uh, am I tall enough, do I have nice enough clothes, do I, the, the, they, never, they never end, and as your life goes on, you continue to promote having more of those comparisons. Secondly, you're comparing yourself to about 20% of what you know of someone else. So this is your whole you, you know everything about you, you see others and you judge yourself against them and you know the tip of the iceberg. So it's really a perception, you're really not comparing, comparing the same thing. Again, back to the apples to oranges. It robs you of joy in your life. You're sitting around thinking about someone else and comparing yourself to them. Um, you're, you're wasting valuable time that you could be improving yourself or you could be reaching that goal that you've been looking to reach. So these comparisons are, are really not, not a healthy thing for us. And, and in the end, it, if comparing, if comparing to others is how we measure our success, our happiness, or our progress, we will always lose. Always. The only way to win is to look inside of you and to learn to compare yourself to you. You are your gold standard. Not your neighbor, not someone in social media, not your friend, not a colleague, not a family member. There is one you, and if you are taking the time to make that person better, you are winning, and you are getting better. And so today, I just really want to say enough of the word enough. We don't need to make these comparisons anymore. You really just need to look within yourself and make yourself better. We need to stop teaching others, especially younger people, to be looking and comparing all the time. Because in the end, you are you, and that is, is enough. Thank you.